and we asked them the, uh, the very interesting question, in their opinion, do they think 8A is possible for every climber? <laughs> We were lucky enough to get hold of uh, an early copy of the Climbing Bible in English um, and even luckier to actually interview the two authors, Martin Bo Brayton and Stian Christofferson. We, we started getting hooked on climbing uh, when we started out, like when we were 13, 12, 13 years old. Um, and um, sort of just stuck together throughout all, all of uh, adolescence and into, into adults really. Um, so we climbed the competitions, did all the competitions together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we did all the climbing competitions, all the training stuff together. So I started studying uh, physiotherapy. So I did that for a year. Uh, um, not for a year, but throughout the four years, that's the education. And then after that, I did a coaching education and uh, coached the national team in Norway for five years. Um, whereas we've been climbing together basically throughout all of this, this time. So I quit working as a civil engineer. So now I only work with the climbing, like route setting and courses and writing books. Having used and read a lot of other training and coaching books for climbing, uh, a lot of other manuals and things, there are three things that I think that set this book, The Climbing Bible, apart from all the rest. Number one is that it's really dedicated for a full spread of climbers, so right from the very beginners to the novices who've never even touched rock before or never gone climbing indoors, right through to elite climbers. There's something for everyone in this book um, to pick it up and actually to use it to train and improve your climbing. There's a reason why the books start out with, with technique. Right? The first chapter is technique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I mean, with, with the fad of physical training for climbing that has been over the last couple of years. Uh, I mean, for instance, that ends up I've, I've always it has always been a, a thing in climbing, but it's sort of like a really big, maybe five years ago or so. And yeah. now everyone does dead hangs and everyone does lock offs and everyone does like the physical part of, of training for climbing. And uh, obviously that's easier because it's easier to quantify and it's easier to measure. Yeah. Whereas how well do you climb technically is a way harder thing to, to actually measure. Um, but yeah it is equally as important. I mean, I just saw the other day on Instagram that, that Giuliani Cameroni, one of the best bowlers in the world, just managed to do his first one arm, like after doing several AC plus bowlers. So I did, it has to be something else besides yeah. physics, right? So, so instead of like starting off with the easy thing, then, then go into the technique and do, do climbing. Like, be a good climber and then build physique on top of that. I think it would be a, a great way for somebody who's quite new to the sport to be able to just pick up that book and it, and it literally takes them from, you know, these kind of basic handholds, very basic movement skills up to the really advanced training. And I, I was yeah. kind of amazed at how much breadth of information you managed to get into one book, how many different areas you actually covered within it. Yeah. Um, was was yeah quite yeah. A, but it, it's called the bible it needs to be yeah <laughs> you can't write like a thin bible <laughs> it's not gonna work huh? <laughs> yeah the second thing is the clarity of the information that comes through um and there's a lot of really good clear pictures in it that actually depict what's going on um and very concise clear explanations of how to do certain things for instance how to actually use all the different handholds um, is set out incredibly clearly. It takes you right through to um, training, you know, the actual physical side of things as well. And again, that's laid out very well. It even has elements of how to train uh, long term, as well as things to do with the fear of falling, how to deal with the mental side of climbing, not just the techniques and the tactics and the physical um, training aspects. And then. Um... We also needed to make it simpler than what was already there. Um, yeah. Just 
like you that's say, really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. It's really scary because you have to you have to kill your darlings uh, so much. Um, but some of the books you read uh, are from extremely competent people, and they show in the books how competent they are. And then you sort of just fall off at some point. Mm -hmm. um, we had this uh, amazing editor who um, she's a climber, but she doesn't climb very hard. And the whole, uh, her idea was the whole time that she should understand it immediately. Yeah. Uh, if anything is too difficult for her, then it's way too difficult. Then it needs to be a lot easier. One of the goals, yeah, one of the goals with the, with the climbing Bible was to put principles over methods. Yeah. Um, so if you understand the principles, you can always adjust the methods. Like in, in training, that's, I, I, yeah. I really can't emphasize that enough that there's no real black and white answer. Uh, you always have to individualize even if there's training methods or periodization methods, uh, you, you need to, you need to, to adjust the methods uh, to each individual, but they're sort of like, they're founded on some principles. So in the climbing Bible, we try to, to present the principles. So the book is incredibly informative, um, yet it's, it's sort of simplified enough so that it's very easy to digest. And the third thing that comes across from this book is that once you've been reading it, once you've been looking through it, it's so easy to absorb the information from it and so digestible that it makes you want to actually get out there and train it. Because I, I remember like being 15, 16, um, flipping through magazines, flipping through books, looking at the pictures, reading the stories, just reading the photo, photo lines and, and like getting that, that feeling of wanting to go and, and train or go outside and climb. And the thought was if we could fill a book with those stories and those photos to make people decide to go and climb and then make them decide to go and read a bit more and understand a bit more and see how they can use the knowledge to, to help themselves become better climbers. That was like the ultimate goal. There's, there's, a, there's actually some moves in here that it describes that I've never done before. I've been climbing for over 20 years now. And there are a few things in here that I've not actually ever learned to do um, in terms of how to move on the wall. So next time I'm on a climbing wall, that's that's what I'm going to be practicing. What's the what's the number one takeaway message you want people to get from from your book after reading it? Just have fun and climb a lot because I mean, either if you just want to climb a little bit, uh, or if you want to climb a lot and get super strong and really good at climbing, you need to just climb a lot and have fun along the way. And even the physical training it um yeah it gets a lot better if you have fun while doing it it's yeah, a bit scary at the start but i mean yeah, yeah if you can just, uh, laugh a bit and you're there with a friend and and everything then it yeah it helps a lot yeah and uh, even if every day on the crag is not fun while projecting a route then the process is is fun so you have to, yeah. you have to appreciate the process and um, like over the last nine years, I've had a couple of kids and you have less time and you have work. Uh, and I feel that sometimes my training isn't that fun and you go out and you try to project hard and it's not that fun. It's sort of like you, you get into this chores thing where you, you just have to do the training and you have to do the climbing to perform at a level that you're, that you're proud of. Like you, you attach a lot of your identity into performing well mm -hmm. instead of just going out having fun climbing and i think that's important that even though you want to be a serious athlete and train hard then you should always maintain that 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 playing theme in training and, and have fun while doing it do you think it's possible for anybody you know just uh, for anybody to attain these these top climbing grades or is, is there going to be a sort of a natural limit on what most people are going to achieve, be able to achieve, do you think? Or is it just the case of purely, if you dedicate yourself enough to it, that you could, anybody could climb 9A or something? Well, 9A is a very high level. Yeah, I mean, it's not really hard. I mean, it's, it's more and more people climb it. Yeah. Uh, and so it seems that if you dedicate yourself enough to it, you can, you can climb it. 
uh, I certainly think with if I dedicated a year of my life to climbing, I yeah. would be able to do 9A. Yeah. Uh, 9A is this the Jan's mission to do. And it's also <laughs> my mission to do yeah. a 9A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. So see see if we can do that before we turn 40, right? Yeah. But but yeah, I I don't think 9A is, is climbable for, for everyone. Okay. Um I have I have a thought in my head that 8A is probably climbable for everyone. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, eight A is eight A is when you start. So that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but I mean, I I sincerely think that even though you start off climbing your your climbing career at the age forty, uh, you you could climb nine and climb eight A uh, at some point. It's just that's just a matter of of dedication and training and and improving. But obviously, you have to invest a lot of time in it it's been uh yeah great to speak to you guys and find out a little bit more about uh, you guys and kind of the process of how you came up with the book and stuff's quite interesting to to hear um and it's definitely a book we i think we're going to be well i'm going to be using anyway <laughs> flicking through for quite a while to come yeah yeah um oh, we're, we're glad to hear i mean we made it we tried to make something that was visually appealing so that people could actually have it on, on their, like on the ta couch yeah, table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but also a book where you can go in, find inspiration, find some training methods and probably understand more, hopefully. Um, because the way we thought was no one had really gathered the different aspects of a climbing performance and we don't we don't claim to have the answer to it but a, a climbing performance is made up by a bunch of different factors uh, so we wanted to at least get that orbit view in between like into one book so so that you can go and if you're interested in reading further on tactics or mental training there's always resources where you can go to but at least you have everything in one place with this book well, thanks, thanks, well, thanks, thanks a lot great and, uh, thank you very much luck. and uh yeah. good luck with your eight days yeah, thank you we're gonna need it <laughs> <Let us Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. bye.